Welcome to Swashbuckling with Code. Tonight we shall study the dark arts of necromancy. I often come across developers, whether they're experienced or newer in their careers, referring to their GitHub as a sort of graveyard for dead projects. And they might not use GitHub, they might just be local projects or a different repository system. But regardless, the mood is still the same, even if they don't use those exact terms either. It's essentially, I don't finish a lot of projects that I work on, and it fills me with either persistent anxiety or anxiety at varying intervals. I think most of us can relate to this, and it certainly resonated with me when I first heard it from someone else. And it's not just a coding thing. The advice that I'm going to try and impart throughout this video is applicable to other areas of life for sure. That advice, put simply, is to embrace that graveyard, which I call coding like a necromancer. When I say embrace your graveyard of projects, it's not meant as an excuse to just not finish anything because certainly there's a lot of value in finishing projects. In fact, a lot of the times for my projects, the last 20% of the project is actually like 50% of the work. But it is an excuse to let it go, especially if you're moving on to something else. Mad scientists and necromancers alike classically have many failed experiments before they have a success. And while it may be horrible and unethical when you're experimenting on bodies, it is not when you are experimenting on code. For myself, and I've seen this in others as well, what often sets me back the most um, in progressing just in my everyday life, in my career, in the things that I want to do, is the anxiety that's caused by having all these things on my mind that I need to do or that I've never completed yet, and it's like, oh, you know, I, I should go back and work on this project or I should finish this project. and I'd like to be done with it. What ends up happening from that is that I just don't end up doing anything at all some days. I just, just become overwhelmed from that. Instead, why not turn all those project corpses into fuel? Don't even give a second thought to those failed experiments, except for that you learn something from them. And now you have, you know, those discarded parts from those experiments as references for your new projects. What I mean by that, getting out of the analogy, is that you have all this code that you know, you've know you worked on that's saved up to a repo, hopefully. It could be on your computer, but I hope you store it somewhere else, that you can constantly reference in anything new that you make because you're gonna forget that stuff at some point or another. So you're building up this sort of you know library of mad scribbles that you're creating it, whether some of them are successes and whether some of them are failures, it doesn't really matter because you can always continue to reference that code in the future. And that's useful in itself, aside from the fact that you clearly learned something when you were making that. And why I say, you know, embrace this graveyard, even though finishing something is very valuable, is starting over is also really valuable. Some of the best code that I've ever written is when I started over once or twice. And a lot of developers would love to be able to start a project over, but they just can't. They have to keep working in a, you know, quote unquote, legacy code base. Also, as I've observed, at least, you usually have to build something wrong or incorrectly to really understand why the right way is the correct way. You'll constantly encounter, you know, tons of idioms and best practices throughout your programming career. And if you just follow those blindly, you won't really know why. And if you're like me, eventually those will pile up to where, you you know, I just do this because they told me to and, you know, that's the way it is. And you can only do so much of that before you just really don't know why you do anything, especially when someone questions you about it. So there's a lot of value in just failing, obviously, you know, that's a common saying. And this is just another way of wording that or looking at that, I think. It's really good to, you know, create the problem and have the problem and then start over or just move on something else. Really, my point is summed up that you learn something from that and you should embrace that. So what coding like a necromancer means to me is treating every graveyard project in your GitHub or wherever you store it as a success. Start embracing that you just did a ton of stuff that you know, it doesn't matter if you finished it or not. You know, there are certain times where you want to try to push yourself to finish things, but if you're really just not feeling it, don't beat yourself up because there's really not much value in that. There's not much value in 
you know, letting yourself get overwhelmed and just feeling bad about it or just not doing anything that day or letting it, you know, eat away at you. Look at it as all the code that you've written that you consistently are doing stuff. And eventually that's going to turn into something, a skill set, a successful project, something that you can be proud of, something that's a success. But honestly, from my perspective, it's all a success. If you're progressing, that's a success. I want to end this video by showing you a real world, you know, personal project of mine where I've had this very same problem. It's called Parallax Fjord. It's this little project that I did, I think about a year ago. And it's a real world example of me never feeling accomplished, even though I should have been proud that I built this thing. Throughout the part of my career that was making websites, I always wanted to work on a Parallax site. And a ton of people have done this. So it was always like an, a spot of sort of an embarrassment for me because I just really like animations. I like creating UI and I just never got to do this. There was never a project that allowed me to do this. So what I set out to do was to learn how to create a parallax site. And I wanted to first like try to use some frameworks or tools because I really didn't have any idea how to do it. I was like, maybe I could figure it out, but let, let's try to just, you know, use whatever's popular. And what I ended up doing was um, as I was just happened to be going through uh, Svelte, the docs, there's a part in there where they do a cool little parallax effect. And it kind of clicked for me how easy it is to actually do this. And so, you know, we started with something that I didn't have a good mental model for how parallax really worked at all. And I started trying to use frameworks and tools, you know, as you usually do. But eventually I made my code much simpler in my opinion and much more understandable for me, which was the important part because I built a mental model of how to create a parallax effect. And there's varying different ones that you can create, of course, it's just the one that I made. And then I also really wanted to do like a cool sort of SVG scene where it you know, goes under the ocean. It's not super creative or original, but I've always wanted to create something like that. I've always been inspired by those things. There was quite a bit of work that I had to figure out for, you know, how to actually output the SVGs and how to layer them, especially the the clouds that kind of go off the screen and all that. And then to top it all off, I added this like tree animation that was actually really complex to, um, you know, make all the trees kind of sway in the breeze. I did end up having to use a library for that. And, uh, you know, I figured out that it didn't look very lifelike when I did them all at once. So I made them like staggered. So I had to write this function to go over, you know, each of them and, and stagger them. And then I did it all in Svelte first, but then I actually was pretty crazy. And I went and I built it in React and then I built it in Vue because um, not that it was the most beautiful code for any of them, but I wanted to just kind of see like size comparisons for something silly like that. And, you know, what all work it was. And I was just kind of looking to compare and contrast like a, a little niche kind of idea and, and which one I liked best. I was just experimenting with them all. So, you know, after a bunch of work put in of all, you know, I rebuilt this thing, you know, multiple times, to me, that should have felt like a huge success, but there's always something else, right? Like I got into this problem where like now I wanted to demo it a little bit and show some people that I knew, but I realized they'd be looking at it on their phones and I didn't build it for phone at first. I built it for desktop. And when I brought it down to a phone, I realized like all the dimensions were all wrong and the scrolling was very different and all that stuff. So, you know, I, I kind of just made it work, but I wasn't super happy with it. I was like, okay, at least it's supported on the phone, but I could say it's a lot better on desktop. So, you know, that's at least a stepping stone. But that was just one more anxiety that I felt of like, you know, I didn't really finish that. And then I realized that on little slower CPUs, the frame rates would get pretty messed up. I also at first had this like cool SVG distortion filter that I was playing around with to make the water kind of wavy in front of the SVGs. And it looked really cool, but it just destroyed the frame rate. And so I was just left with this project that I couldn't really demo or show because I wasn't proud of it because the frame rate was terrible and I hadn't optimized it and I hadn't figured it out despite putting a bit of time into it. And that haunted me for like months. Every time I thought about it, I didn't think of it as like, oh, I learned all this cool stuff and I kind of finished this project. It was just like, oh, it's just another project that I didn't finish and I really need to go back and do it. So I think you get the point now. And what, you know, until I reflected on this idea of treating your projects as success, even when you don't finish them, I wasn't very proud of that. And all the work that I put in was just kind of thrown away and it actually ended up serving to just give me more anxiety. But after really thinking about that, 
you know, it put things into perspective and it, it helped me re-clarify and refocus like, yeah, I did that. And now I can do something cooler next time. So that real world example was just to kind of show you on a personal level that I feel this as well, um, just to give a little bit more context. And especially for, you know, younger, newer developers that, you know, people that have been doing it for many years feel the exact same thing all the time. It doesn't matter how good you get or how cool is something you make. If you let yourself, you'll be disappointed in it. You'll, you'll never really feel like you accomplished that thing unless you sit back and reflect on that and let it go and move on to the next thing. This is what works for me. This is usually what makes me the happiest, makes me continue to progress and you know improve my craft. If it doesn't work for you, I'm sorry about that, but I hope that it will work for some of you and will be useful to you. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.